What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Emily Brooklyn Show. Today, I have a guest with me that I'm really excited to introduce to you guys. He is a marathon runner, social media content creator, and a vegan influencer. Welcome to my friend, Roberto. What's good? Hi. How, How are you? you? I'm doing great. I'm You're doing, doing good? Yeah. Okay. I'm really excited about your regiment. That's why I brought you here today. I want to know, like, from top to bottom, your day training Ooh. to marathon. I... First of all, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, hold on. What got you into wanting to do a marathon? So when I moved to California, I started running a lot more. This is back in, like, 2011. Okay. And I was there for four and a half years. But in the time that I was there, mm -hmm. I started running a lot more. And okay. I always thought that I was a bad runner. But I think it's because I used to get really bad cramps on my side. And I think that's partly because... I was eating horribly. I didn't know how to breathe. I was drinking only soda. Okay. So, so like, that's <laughs> not going to be it. helpful to me running. But when yeah. I moved to uh, California, I started changing my eating habits a little bit more. And okay. I was just like, all right, let me just start running. So I started running, like, three miles every day. No matter what my day looked like, I would run. And then eventually it got to a point where it was just like, I'm upping the miles. And I was just like, oh, I want to run a marathon one day. So in my mind, I was like, being from New York City, I want to run the New York City Marathon. So this upcoming New York City Marathon is going to be my first marathon. Yeah. That's so, so looking, exciting. To that. So, yeah, um, this year I was just like, I'm going to dedicate the entire year to running. And usually I'm just like lifting. Yeah. So I got back to it and here we are. Oh, wow. There. Yeah. Oh, and it's November 5th. Yeah. Right? So to so the people that wants to come out and support and yeah. be along the lines and so where where does the new york marathon go again it starts in staten island okay and we start going over the, the verrazano bridge okay and then it ends in manhattan uh in central park but we go through all the boroughs oh you go through all the boroughs yeah. so this may be a stupid question right i don't know a lot about marathon running um is there any point before the actual marathon where you're going to run the actual route of the marathon? Actually, we've run, I run with a running group and we've yeah. run a little bit of the route, but this upcoming weekend, we're actually going to do a little bit more of that route. We're going to okay. do 16 miles that day. So we're going to get a little bit of a preview of the route, but because, you know, there's cars always driving around and stuff like that and yeah. certain bridges are closed, you can't fully get that experience until Race day. But that's but, also good, but right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little exciting. You yeah. Kind of scary, but yeah. <laughs> exciting at the same time. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you prepare for that? Like, if you have to go run, which you're about to do, 16 miles, what do you eat? And, like, how do you prepare to do that? Today's episode is sponsored by Swig, an all-natural vitamin pack that you add into your water. It holds B12 vitamin minerals, electrolytes. I like to use it as a pre-workout before the gym or before I go dancing. I know I have a lot of active followers or people that needs that little extra energy in your everyday life. I really want to recommend Swig to you guys. And thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode. So typically I have my long runs on Saturdays. And okay. before that, I'll usually do electrolytes. I'll do a banana or two and a bagel with peanut butter and agave or vegan honey okay yep so a little bit of carb a little bit of fat yeah right protein, okay but mostly carbs mostly yeah carbs. that's like what what you really need to fuel right. these runs yeah and then i also know like because you're like a vegan mm. athlete you probably get that all the time like you need your protein yeah, and yeah. where are you getting that from and yeah. so like what made you get into veganism so, long story. <laughs> it was over the uh, course of a couple years, I would yeah. say, maybe two and a half years. When I moved to California, my girlfriend at the time, she was pescatarian. Okay. So, I was just like, all right, I'll try that just to try something new. I've always been open-minded to, like, trying different things, yeah. certain things. And, <laughs> and I was just like, I'll, I'll do the pescatarian thing. So, I did that for two years. And eventually, we went to a supermarket, um, Ralph's. And, and there was a sales associate that we were cool with. And we went to buy like a tuna steak, which mm -hmm. we usually, usually get all the time. Yeah. And it was like kind of discolored. It was kind of like purplish. Mm. And it was like not our, the usual look of it. 
So we brought it to the sales associate and we were like, yo, is this okay to eat? And he was like, no. He was like, and there's been so many recalls with the fish here. Like, you don't want to get any more from here at the, what? at the time. So, and then I started thinking about like the mercury levels because I, mm-hmm. I heard about this like since I was young that there's high levels of mercury in fish, seafood. And from there, it was just like, oh, okay, we're going vegetarian. So we went vegetarian and we did that for think four months or something like that and the funny thing is like every time I changed my eating habits I was just like as long as I have this so at first it was like as long as I have shrimp I'm good whatever and then it became oh as long as I have my honey buns I'm good you know (laughs) and then I gave that up so um, yeah after that I read a article um, well she sent me an article that said that it was like bad karma to consume animals in any which way and I have karma tattooed on me so it's just like for different reasons but <laughs> yeah it got me thinking and I was just like I feel like I'm gonna be a hypocrite if I'm still continuing to like consume animals like milk and then like wearing the clothing and stuff like that mm. you know so from there then on I went vegan and it's been almost 10 years oh wow yeah. So it's like, it's actually not really like a health choice. It's nah. more so like the karma, the, yeah. the conscious of it. Yeah, I, w- I would say that last um, portion of it, like going from vegetarian to vegan, that was like, that was that it. was the, the main reason. But before it was just like trying something new and just like getting new information. And yeah. Then like, as I mentioned, I'm like always open to different things. And yeah. the funny thing is... I always forget this part. When I was in college, I went mm-hmm. to the city college in New York. Um, my professor, one of my professors, I think my public relations professor, she was mm-hmm. just like, oh, you guys need to start a blog. Like, everybody needs to start a blog about something. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to start a blog about just doing different things, like getting okay. out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And the first thing that I decided I was going to do was go vegan for a week but at first i was just like oh i'm gonna do vegetarian for a week and yeah. then i was just like nah let's let's go more extreme yeah let's go vegan and i was like i don't know where that came from like That's i so honestly funny. don't know like it's kind of like random your first instinct. yeah and then i started eating vegan without really doing research i was just like eating baby carrots and green apples here and there yeah not nearly as much as you would need especially me being an active person and then about Four days in, I was just like, all right, the way I'm eating, I'm going to look all cut up if I start working out again because I took a little bit a little bit of a break. Yeah. So I did, like, push-ups. I did, like, ten push-ups, and I felt like I was going to die. Yeah? Yeah, so then I went to the kitchen, and I drank um, some whole milk that I had, and I just threw out the challenge. I was like, nah, I ain't doing this. But it's because I didn't know, like, what I was doing. Like, right. I was pretty much malnourishing myself. Yeah. And, but now... Like, I know what to do. I know I got to eat a lot more than that. And yes. A lot of people, I think, they think that when you're vegan that you're eating just fruits or just vegetables or just whole foods. And it's like, it's bigger than that. It's Yeah. It can be what you make it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I've dibbled and dabbled quite a lot in, yeah. like, veganism. Like, I've had long periods where I was completely vegan. Mm-hmm. And, like, for me, like, I'll be honest push to do it or the reason why I do it is like because I just feel better yeah I feel lighter I feel more clear-headed I feel like I don't eat red meats at all no dairy you know so I have certain things that I never do but like I think yeah for me it's like didn't you feel that change in your body as well when you switch completely yeah definitely I felt like a lot lighter yeah as you mentioned yeah and I just felt like being more conscious about the food that I was consuming, it made more, made me more conscious in other areas of my life. Just like slowing down a lot more. Like, oh, you're just not gonna just grab something. You're just gonna read the bag just right. to make sure that you know. And then like, yeah. you, I feel like I became a lot more patient with other people too at the mm. time. So I don't know. I don't know if. It was just during that time because I feel like lately I've been a little bit less patient with people (laughs) because people be annoying sometimes. For sure. But but it is what it is. (laughs) Yeah, but no, but it's completely true. And I think I hear a lot also, like, especially, like you say, like the myth is like, oh, all you eat is like spinach and carrots. And it's like there's so many things. And even with the options now. Yeah. But how do you feel about all those options? Like the the patties 
the vegan patties you can buy at the supermarket and like do you eat those yeah i, yeah? I definitely do okay um, i feel like i do a good like balance of mm -hmm. both things some days it is completely different some yeah. days i could eat a lot more processed foods versus like whole foods or whatever yeah but it's really what I, how i eat is more sustainable for me like it right. works for me and some people they're like oh i wouldn't eat that way like i want to eat just straight whole foods or whatever and that's cool that's what works for you i'm not right. gonna you know be mad at it but like yeah veganism is a lot more accessible than what it was before when I when I first went vegan yes. the shit that I was doing can we curse on here yeah oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> when I first went vegan like the shit that I was doing was like ridiculous I didn't know and there was not too many options I didn't have that much information so like some of the shakes that I would make were disgusting <laughs> like I would not eat I would not drink this in a million years again like example tofu tempeh uh, soy protein isolate because people kept on talking about the protein so it kind of made me uh, afraid in right. certain ways too and so yeah, you made and, shakes with that yeah I'll just blend it all up because I'm like <laughs> I, I need to get the I gotta get the nutrition in or whatever and it was nasty but I just kept it sounds that. but then eventually I learned I'm like yo you don't have to be doing all this stuff and right you know you can fry up some tofu and yeah, eat it over like, noodles you don't have to do all this right. extra I was being mad extra but also <laughs> It was like, I just wanted to make sure that people could see vegans as not, as not being just like white hippies. Yes. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah. I'm going to break a stereotype. So that's For when sure. I started doing more like social media stuff too. That's really cool. And do you feel like that's, do you feel like that's the reason why like, because I've seen like some of your most like biggest videos, it's just like what I eat in a day. Yeah. And it's like, it's so crazy that those videos like blow up. Like I was looking at your comments. They are really like coming at you yeah. for eating vegan. <laughs> I'm like, but do you think that has something to do with also like the way you look and like it's a controversy that you're breaking a stereotype there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I often get people like, oh, and this is, I'm smaller right now because I'm running a lot more. Mm. Usually, like I lost 25 pounds since I started oh, really? run, like running like seriously. Yeah. But I always got, oh, roids or whatever. I'm like, yo, I'm not willing to compromise my heart. Like, I feel like I would be the one person that takes steroids and I'll just get a heart attack really, like, right away <laughs> or something like that. Some some people, it takes a while, but, like, I've always been afraid of, like, stuff like that. But yeah. you get people leaving all types of comments because they think that it's not possible mm -hmm. on a vegan diet or whatever. And I'm, like, I've lifted, like, the majority of my life, actually. Yeah. So, like... I, I know how to gain muscle. I know how to manipulate my weight, like, yeah. easily. So, I don't know. But some of those comments that you get is just, like, you, you get the bad with the good and you just yeah, yeah. deal with it. And I yeah. don't know if you've seen some of my responses to some of them, but no, yeah, some you, people get it. Some people you get it. You go at them. Yeah, like, you, co could, you coming back so I could be a lot worse. <laughs> I could be a lot worse. I just decide not to because I'm like... It's not worth also, it. Also, I work with brands and stuff. Like, exactly. I don't want them seeing me, like, wilding out mm -mm. like that. Like, <laughs> It's not worth the energy. And, like, yeah. nine times out of ten, it's really just people that are, like, misinformed or, yeah, yeah. you know, don't know what they're talking about. Because that's the number one thing um, that I always get. Like, mm. it's the protein, the protein, yeah, the yeah. protein. It's like, but do you understand that the protein you get through meat is because the animals was eating plants. Like, do you understand oh, yeah. that like, that's why you're getting protein? Yeah. Like I, that's like hard for people to understand that mm -hmm. like the meat is not the only source of yeah. protein. And yeah. like, there are much more greater sources of protein that's not meat, but it's, but people that doesn't haven't watched documentaries or like, I don't know for me, what made the big difference was watching a lot of these like documentaries yeah. on it and even just the meat industry, the dairy industry, understanding the industry behind it, understanding the health behind it. Like, cause if you don't, we don't know, we're not raised to know these things. Like we're raised to believe the opposite. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's true. So you got to like de brainwash yourself. It's um, yeah. yeah. I think um, a lot of people too, like who, and it's vegans and non-vegans who have an issue with soy. And yeah. oftentimes when I find that there's people who are not vegan who eat meat and they're talking about soy, I'm like, do you not know that the biggest 
consumers of soy are the animals that you're eating. Yes. So you're eating soy too. <laughs> like if you're going to be mad about it, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really like, um, yeah, it's really interesting, like how people live their lives. And also like, I don't know, I've met so many different types of, I mean, obviously in this life, we meet a lot of different type of people and like, I've met vegans, but then they would smoke like 20 blunts a day. And it's like, bro, like, what? <laughs> backwards. Yeah, it's like a little <laughs> bit backwards. Like, I'm not really understanding or like people that, like, it's, it's just so interesting that like how different our minds are set up in like what's good for us and what's not good for us. Yeah. Like, because in my head it's like I quit smoking because mm. I knew it wasn't good for me. Yeah. But it's like, but then why would I eat the same like why would i eat bad and like quit smoking because it's bad for me like i might as well go all the way mm, and do everything that's good for me you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. or but i also am a big believer in like balance, balance. yeah yeah and I, I find that a lot of people are like nitpicky about like one little thing like, yes my more recent like what i eat in a day like before i ran that 22 miles like i ended it with a coke you know, I, yeah. I I had my um, burrito bowl and a Coke on the side. Yeah. I was like, I know this is going to piss people off. Yeah. And I purposely do things like that sometimes. I mean, I'm going to consume it anyway. But yeah. in my mind, I'm like, th this is just going to get more comments. Yeah, like, I'm for gonna, sure. I'm going to use you the way that you're trying to use me. You're trying yep. to use me for my energy. And I'm just going to use you to, like, yeah. get my platform bigger. So, mm -hmm. like, But, yeah, it's like they'll see one thing and then it negates everything that you've Eaten. Yeah, like there's like oh that's I hate that you had this or whatever. I'm like yo, it's not your body. Like, yeah, so. it's really interesting that random people have so many. But I mean that's social media. Yeah, that's yeah, what course, makes us like have the content that we could have and like is people spend their time yeah. on being mad about weird stuff. Yeah. Um. So what got you into like content creating and what made you want to be like okay this is, and also what made you want to show that and like really like focus on that yeah it was pretty uh, like a pretty natural thing for me mm -hmm. uh i didn't get a smartphone until i don't even know it was like years after people had smartphones okay and people had instagram already and i remember when i was working at zara i had a blackberry i think at the time yeah. or something like this i forget i think it's like 2014 or something like that and I had one of my coworkers actually make an Instagram account for me. And then what I used to do was um, email my brother back in New York um, pictures that I wanted him to post for me. <laughs> so I was just like, yo, can you can you post this that for me? Because so I can I didn't have a smartphone. But then once I got <laughs> a smartphone, then I like started like playing around with it more. But around the same time that I went vegan is when I started doing like the social media stuff. And at first I was just like showing the food that I was eating mm -hmm. and it was like, I would get like a good, good engagement for me at the time yeah. or whatever. Things like slowly grew, but then I started showing myself a little bit more like my face and I've always been a private person. I don't really like showing myself like that. I just like, I'm going to fall back. So sometimes I will post a picture and then delete it after like yeah. a couple of days after i'm like yo i don't want people like no. it's just that paranoia in me i do but, the same like <laughs> but then eventually i was just like that those pictures of me showing myself are is getting more engagement and it's because people are not used to seeing a vegan that look like me mm. so then i was just like all right let me just just keep on and I, it took a while for me to get used to that because i just don't yeah. like i'm I feel like I'm more of a behind the scenes type person, even yeah. though I am like out there now. Yeah. But yeah, it just it it took some time getting used to, but as yeah. I kept on doing it, it just naturally started to grow. My platform just started to grow because people kind of just like wanted to see something that wasn't typically seen, you know, in social media. So yeah, yeah. that's really funny because it's kind of the same thing with me. Yeah. Like it, it was kind of the controversy of yeah. like being a white woman doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how like sometimes you got to play into those controversies yeah. a little bit on social media because otherwise it's um, not not like play into it and be fake or not yeah. be something you're not. But if you're genuinely just your character mm -hmm. is controversial to yeah. some people or like your life choices, like you said, OK, I know it's going to piss them off to put a Coke in like but it's that's the real type of stuff that people want to like see and talk about and 
So do you do full time social media now? Is that your job? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. For the past, I would say five years. Yeah. 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 It's nice. Wonderful. And in between that time, I, I'm a former certified personal trainer. So okay. in, in between that time, I did train a little bit, and then yeah, I worked at Equinox for like three months, but okay, <laughs> it didn't last. Like, How's Equinox? Working there. Um, the gym. I'm thinking about oh, the, joining the gym. The gym is good. Yeah. 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 Equinox, okay. Uh, sponsor me. <laughs> they do? No, no. Oh, I'm, you I'm want them to sponsor me? I'm telling them to sponsor me too. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but like, no, nah, Equinox is a good gym. The one nice. thing that I wish that I took advantage of is the showers. Yeah. Up and like to, <laughs> to the end, they were like, yo, Berto, no, before you like leave, you need to like make sure you then I took the showers and stuff like that. I was just like, I wish I would have did this a long what? time ago. It's a nice shower. And What's got, about the showers? And they got like eucalyptus towels, like in I don't know. They, it's like oh, it's an experience. It's an experience. Yeah. But the memberships are like three hundred a month. Yeah, it, I, it's around there. Like that is absolutely insane. It is. But I would pay it. Yeah. Like if you if you got it, then I would say either Equinox or Lifetime. Lifetime is good too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cause I go to Blink. Yeah, I do too. It's ghetto. I do too. <laughs> I just there. Yeah, I go to Blink. I've been going to Blink. Even the time where I got hired at Equinox, which is the parent company of Blink, I was still. Oh, it is. Yeah, I would still go to Blink too. Yeah, <laughs> but it's really ghetto. Maybe it's just my location because it's. No, nah, I think I know where which we live you at. Go to. <laughs> I think you I know, know which one yeah, I go I, to. I've been in that one like a few <laughs> times, and honestly, I could go to another one, but it's close. It's close. It's convenient. It's so, right there. Yeah, like, I'm gonna go. I'm like, it's two minutes from my house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I yeah, started, we go to the same blink. <laughs> we no, we have to because, blink. like, every time I tell people I go to that blink, they're like, "It's ghetto in there." Yeah, and they're like, "Yo, you can't go to this other one." I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, but it's further away. It's out the way. Yeah. And I'm I'm not there that long. Like right exactly. now I'm not lifting as much as I usually would. So I'm yeah. not, I only spend like one day a week there right now. Yeah. But like if it gets to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm in there more time and I feel like I need more of a like Peace different of mind. vibe. <laughs> yeah. Because the first time I walked into that blink, I was like, yo, it smells bad. No, it I, gives yeah. It gives jailbird some days. It's very much very big groups of men working yeah, out yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like as a woman, it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Like and they'll like give small comments and like be weird. And it's just like it's just real weird getting hit on while you're like doing a workout. Like I just think <sighs> I don't know if people go to the gym for that, but mm -hmm. like the gym is that place where I'm like, I don't want to talk to nobody. Yeah, don't yeah. look at me. Don't like, I'm just in my own. That's my me time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's my moment to like, not think about mm -hmm. anything. Then that, yeah. That, I, I use the gym but, as my therapy. So like, exactly. I, I would understand. I, I, yeah. That would be annoying. <laughs> but it's also like the area. So we live in the same area. Yeah. That's like how this came about. We literally bumped into each other yeah. on the street <laughs> and Roberta was like, Hey, we follow each other on yeah. TikTok." And I was like, wait, what? And so I had just followed you because you posted, um, about vegan food in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. And it just landed on my for you page. And I was like, Oh cool. Like he's like, I, cause I'm always into like vegan stuff when it yeah. pops up. And I don't know if I saw that you were in Brooklyn or New York, yeah. but I always like to follow creators that like are in the area and that post yeah. stuff that I'm interested about, obviously. So I was like, oh shit, we do follow each other yeah. on TikTok. And then, um, yeah, this came about. But anyways. So random. Exactly. <laughs> hella random. But so we live right in the same area and our area is very much like um, young, mm -hmm. artsy, creatives, um, and so I feel like that gym also has that. I bump into yeah. a lot of like artists, actors, designers, like, oh yeah, I don't know. Equinox is a little bit intimidating for the workout, but I want to try it. Yeah. Do they have like a trial workout? Like one day? Yeah, you could do a one, one day pass, check it out. even with that, it's, I mean, it's kind it's of like crazy. It's like $90 for a day. I think it's like 60 or something like that around there. $60 for a day? I think so. I'm going to be in so. there all day. I think so. Yeah, Straight. oh yeah, take advantage of it. Straight. Yeah, yeah. 12 hours. I'll take naps in there. <laughs> Go to the break room too and take a nap inside there. <laughs> Getting off the top of Equinox. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really interested on like the journey from personal training to full time content creation. So, when was the moment where you were like, okay, I'm going to do this full time and cut everything else? 
So when I was when I was younger, I always thought that I would want to work for somebody else just because I felt like it was too much pressure to like do it on your own. Mm -hmm. But and by the time when I moved to California, I started getting into the mind state of wanting to be my own boss, kind of in a way. Or, yeah. Um, I, I used to meet with my friend and he didn't mean this maliciously, but I mentioned to him like certain things that I wanted to do. And he was just like, oh, but that's a lot of paperwork that you got to do at the end of the year, which mm -hmm. it, it is like it's some paperwork when it comes to like taxes and stuff like yeah. that. But I kind of let that stop me also from like wanting to really go out on my own. But yeah. eventually what I always tell people is that like if there's something that you really want to do and you don't do it in your life, it's going to tug at your heart forever. Mm. Like it's just inevitable. Like yeah. you're going to think about it all the time unless yeah. you seriously convince yourself. And there's no amount of money that can keep me at a job that I really don't want to be at. So like some people are able to do it easily. I'm just not one of those type of people. Mm -mm. But when, yeah, when I was in California, I was just like, I would look at different like YouTubers and about, they would mention about having like odd jobs or like jobs that will allow you to like pursue your dream job. Whatever. Yeah. So eventually I got to a point where I was just like, all right, let me get this personal trainer certification because also I don't want to be reliant on a job too. Yeah. Because you never know when things are going to go downhill. Like yeah, you, know, you can like, get fired yeah, from one day to fired. another. Yeah. Lay yeah. Layoffs and stuff like that. As we've seen in like 2020 and stuff like mm -hmm. that, like things just happen that are out of your control. So yeah. you need to be able to have something that you're able to, you know, have as a backup if it's not your primary thing. Yeah. So I got my certification and when I moved back to New York, that's when I got my first client and we, started training and I was just like, okay, this is like something I can maintain. And I also had a job during that time too. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would get up in the morning at like four thirty to be in the gym by like five. And my client was on the upper West side. So I would have to go up there and be there by like seven or something like that. Seven or eight. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But then I would come back home, nap for a little bit and then go to my full time job and just wow. repeat this every day so when a lot of people say i don't have time i'm like yeah. i mean you it's, you just have to be willing to sacrifice like in order to right. like, get to certain things and of course time you know is precious and there's certain things that you just don't want to give up but at, during that time it was just like work 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 make money whatever and just keep on building on top of that so yeah eventually i started like training a couple more clients but then still working and then naturally i learned that you can make money from doing like social media stuff and luckily i had somebody to like mentor me and nice. she she kind of gave me like a guideline and like reaching out to brands but that's when i found out that it was kind of like the wild wild west it's like everybody has their own rates or whatever like yes everybody can bring something different valuable to like a, a different brand or whatever and the partnerships and whatever deliverables that they might need like i don't know but I learned a lot during that time, and over the course of years, I started charging more and more as my platform grew, mm -hmm. and just, like, pushing the envelope to see, like, how far I could take it, and yeah. then eventually I got, like, a manager, and she, like, oversees, like, my contracts and stuff like that, because oh, great. it's a lot to be go <laughs> going through all of these, this paperwork, especially yeah. when you're doing it on your own, so. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot. Yep. You said it happened like organically that you found out, okay, I can actually make money off this. And so was that because somebody reached out to you or was that because you reached out to somebody? How did that happen? I'm interested in like the oh. everybody journey with content creation. I remember this clearly. The person who mentored me actually invited me to be a speaker with her at like one of these like expos okay um, so when we were on the phone because we never met but we followed each other and she had a huge following yeah and she still does but she was like oh yeah i was talking to this person and they don't they don't know their rates or whatever i was like rates what are you talking about rates and then she was like oh so then she filled me in about like working with brands and i had like um brands like send me product before and stuff like that and i yeah. never like asked for money i just didn't i wasn't i didn't know but right by the time that i found out that you can make money i already had twenty thousand followers so right. i didn't also have that added pressure 
to be like, oh, I need to build my platform so I can make money. It was just like it naturally grew. Yes. And then it was just like, all right, let me figure out how to use my platform rather than build it to make money. Yes. So, yeah, once she, she gave me that information, um, it was at an expo that we spoke and I was able to talk to a few different brands. Then they started reaching out to me from that expo. Cool. Like, um, having some face-to-face time. Yeah. And got my first two uh, sponsorships from meeting at that expo and then kind of just learned. It went from that. there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, what you said about keep raising the price, like pushing the envelope and like that's something I had to like – get used to when you're your own boss and you're your own, like you run your own thing is that like people will try to get the cheapest price, you know, of course everybody will that. So it's like, it's about knowing your own value and what like you bring to the table. And sometimes I forget that people don't know how to do that. Or like that even people that's been in it for years, like I did a gig and I thought I didn't know what everybody was getting paid, but it was like a big company. And I was like, I'm going to get paid for this. Like, this is a big gig. It's a big company. I know they have it. (laughs) And not just like pushing, but like what I feel like is fair for my work hours and all of these things. Not just like, let me take what I can get, but a fair price Mm -hmm. for what you um, give. And so there was issue with payment. Like they were really slow with payment and da da da. So I was talking to the other girls and I realized we had like completely different rates and like they were getting half of what I was getting. And they even maybe have a bigger following than me or like, and I was like, oh, so it's like knowing your value and setting that value and um, knowing what you're worth to these companies because Social media today is 90% of their marketing Mm -hmm. and their promotion. And so they would spend, I don't know, 50,000 or whatever on a TV commercial, a hundred thousand or so that's that money they're spending on us now, Mm -hmm. social media influencers. So they have the budget, Yeah. but if you only ask for a thousand, they're going to give you a thousand, you know, like you have to know how to set your price. Yeah. No, that's real. And I find that, well, when I was more so in contact with brands myself rather than my management mm-hmm. you know, years ago, actually, I find out I found that there were times where brands would try to use other creators with smaller fo- followings to say, "Oh, we're paying we're paying this, this. Or, or, or a bigger following," and they're like, "We're paying this." Yes. So it's not right for you to be charging yes. no. That's how much that's I'm charging. That's my price. That's my right. price. I'm not going to go down to their price yeah. because they don't know their value. I know my value. Yes. And like, we're we're not only advertising, we're creating repeat customers for them. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I make a video and I'm uh, and it's there forever or for a year, whatever the term is, yeah. um, people are continuously seeing this. And if you see, notice the algorithms, like, You'll see a reel that's from like 2019 sometimes. Like, for sure. Like, will pop yeah. up again. So it's like, no, like, you have to really know your value because, yeah. like, they'll, they will take advantage they of you. They will. For sure. For sure. Like, I remember <laughs> before I had management, like, I would realize that also more so often they try to take advantage because they know you are the person behind the keyboard. Yeah. Like at the end, I was like from management, like I was like pretending to be my own manager Mm -hmm. for a while because I was like, when I would say it was me, they would exactly do that. Like I got, um, this a little while ago, they wanted me to be a lead in a movie. Mm. And like, I know what people are getting paid for that. So we're going back and forth contractually And, like, the person starts to say these weird things, like, oh, yeah, I have a friend that knows who you are, and he's like, I can't believe you're paying her this. And and I was just like, what? Like, so why are you asking me? Why are you calling me? Like, I know, again, like, I know my price. And, like, but it's also about knowing your worth to the point where you're fine with saying no. Yeah. Like, I remember I had my my father's like a coach and a salesman. And so he's always like coaching me on prices and stuff. And he was like, (laughs) of course, probably I'm his daughter and he sees my worth even more than I do. But he wanted me to charge these like outrageous prices for promos like five, six years ago. And I was like, Dad, I'm not charging that because nobody's going to take the offer. Like, (laughs) I'd rather do like 
10 I'm getting paid for yeah. than say no to 10 like yeah. at this point. Would you say like what you have right now is your dream job? I don't know. I don't know. To be honest, I do love the ability to have my time. Like I, mm -hmm. that's something that I really needed, like especially with my daughter and stuff like that. I needed to be able to have more free time. My schedule gets a little bit crazy, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And I don't know if I would be training the way that I'm training now if I didn't have the time that I do and, you know, recovering yeah. and doing as well as I'm doing. But and I mean, like physically, because yeah. financially, you know, it's ups and downs. It's ups and downs. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm in a down right now, but I'm about to be yeah. up. So, like, That's it's, listen, it that's another thing about yeah. content creation. Like people see that you have followers and they're just like, oh, you're lit. You're yeah, rich. Like, nah. like, no, it takes a lot of I know people with way more followers than I have that don't make a dime yeah. of social media. Yeah. And people with less followers that it's a full time job. Yeah. And like, it's really, again, like knowing your own value and whatever. But sorry yeah, 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 for yeah, uh, yeah, interrupting. Yeah. But yeah, ebbs and flows of it for sure. Yeah. And we live yeah. in New York City, too. So like. It's expensive. Like, you know, it's, it is not Very. cheap. And yeah. Especially when it comes to, like, working br with brands, you have to also consider your expenses, too. Like, Yes. If somebody's, like, in o Ohio, I don't know about Ohio, but I feel like certain spots, probably <laughs> it's going to be less um, uh, expensive. Yes. So if it could be a somebody there and then you're here, you have to, like, consider that. Like, you have bills to pay. You have to make a living from this if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. You don't have a full-time job as well, so. So what's your ultimate, do you have, like, an ultimate goal? Like, this is, like, this is what I would love to do full-time and, like, this is where I want to end type of thing. Not really, and that's something that I've kind of, I used to struggle with yeah. before because it's, like, I thought that I wanted to do something and then it was, like, oh, I don't really want to do that, like, but now in my life, I'm kind of just taking it day by day and having fun with my life, trying to take advantage of every moment and just, you know, in enjoy the things that I do. And nice. of course, I, I feel like in the times of me creating content, this is probably the most fun I'm actually having with creating content. So it's like cool. very fulfilling because I'm able to be more creative yes. rather than feeling like, oh, this is an obligation for yes. me. And before when I was like, doing everything on my own and just having like to work with brands back to back to back because I wasn't charging enough and stuff like that. It just felt like yeah. this is a job yes. like, and it didn't feel fun. It, it stopped being fun. But now that I'm able to like run and, and create content around running and stuff like that, it's just like, it, it's been pretty, pretty good. But like yeah, nice. for the future, I don't know. We'll see. You're open I'm, to I'm different open. avenues yeah. and things. And I, also, like, I want to make this clear. I'm not opposed to having a job. I'm opposed to having a job that you don't is like. not fulfilling. Yes. You know, if there was a job that was presented to me, and they're like, oh, this is this. And I'm like, oh, this is really, like, something yes. that I really wanted to do. Yeah. Then I, would, I would do that. Like, yeah. just whatever. And still do my stuff on the side. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree with that because I think it's so much like, oh, either you're a nine to five or you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I'm a dance teacher mm -hmm. a couple of days a week. That is my job. Yeah. But I also have a job that's content creation. Mm -hmm. And and I like that it's again, it's about doing something that you love. Yeah. And like for me, I have so many friends that chose a job for financial stability mm -hmm. and they hate it there. Yeah, And I'm just like. They're like, it's, it's a push for me mm -hmm. to not do that. Like, it's hard in New York. It's expensive here, especially with kids. Like, I think it was like last week, I was like, I'm ready to pack my bags and go back to Europe. Like, mm -hmm. this is too much. It's too tough. It's yeah. too da, da, da. And I'm just like, but what would that entail? That would entail me stopping all my goals and dreams and everything I have going for myself to be like, no, let me just get an office job or whatever and make sure I have stable income. And it's like, like my friend always says, like, cause we talk about this a lot and she's just always like, well, yeah, you have low lows, but you also have really high highs. Like mm -hmm. when you get that gig or like you see the fruits of your labor or like it's it's so like a different type of fulfillment to do something that you genuinely like love and have a passion for. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like what you said, like there's no amount of money in the world that can keep me at a job. I'm not happy at. Yeah. And that's exactly how I feel too. 
And that's why I said dream job, because for me, like just being able to do what you love mm -hmm. and hopefully someday it'll be something great. But like the journey up to that, still being able to make a living yeah. and do what you love at the same time. I think it's like, that's really important for me to yeah. push to younger people. Like, because it's so much about money now, which makes sense because it's an expensive world and yeah. things cost money. Um, but also like if you're miserable, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You see people change when they decide to just like stick to doing something yes. that they really didn't want to do, but because yes. it provides that stability. Yes. A lot of us get used to that, like being in that mind state too. It's like being from the hood and you like start, you're just like used to seeing certain things and then you like move out and then you're like, Oh, that wasn't normal. Right. Like, that's that's how it I feel like it is. But yeah, a lot a lot of people just get caught up in that cycle. They built they um get more debt and stuff like that and mm -hmm. it feels impossible for them to actually get out of that cycle. So I wouldn't I I, I I'm very grateful like yeah. for like taking advantage of like certain opportunities that I saw and just deciding to like leave. I quit Zara three times in total. Yeah. yeah, they first when I was moving out to California and um second when I was just like, yo, I, I keep feeling that like I need to go. But yeah. they kept taking me because they knew my work ethic. They knew that I made like a positive environment and stuff like that. I worked yeah. really hard. Yeah. But I also knew when it was time to go. You and just knew it was just something that was like, this is not it. Yeah. I'm it, meant it, to do something else. Yeah. And it was for a while. Like, yeah. I remember when I was working at one, I worked at numerous stores in Zara. And one of the uh, stores that I worked at, I remember I used to like kind of like pray before starting the shift. And it was because I didn't want to be there. Like, I was just like, I need to get myself like really prepared. And this is like a daily thing to like deal with customers, my coworkers and stuff like that. And it wasn't like the worst, but it was the worst for me because I knew I didn't want to be there. So I had to really like put myself in a certain mind state to be yeah. like, all right, I can deal with this. And then eventually when I worked at another location, when I became a manager and I knew that I was eventually going to, you know, go I think there was a YouTube video that I watched that the person said to write down like your goal on a paper and keep it in your pocket. Yes. So that's what I used to do. I, I, I wrote it down and kept kept it in my pocket, would look at it every once in a while while on the job just to remind myself, all right, this is a means to an end. Just like deal with it for yes. right now. But a lot of the things that I wanted to do during that time was like, oh, eventually I want to become corporate um, for Zara or even at Starbucks when I was at Starbucks too. And it was me just convincing myself to do something that I knew I did not want to do. I was mm. really trying to convince myself and it didn't stick. It's never going to stick if you, it's something that you really don't want to do. So, yeah. And it was that financial thing too. And that's really interesting that some people can stick to that. Yeah. Like, and I think there is so much power in like listening to that voice mm -hmm. of like, I don't, this is not it. Yeah. Like, that's why I moved to New York. Cause I was just like, I know there's something for me over there mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is. And I think that's the thing also, like you said, you was at Zara and it was like, it's hard to quit a job that gives some type of stability when that other thing is unstable. Mm -hmm. Like you're leaving something that's comfort zone to to not knowing okay when am I going to make my first check of content creation and but what I also just found is that sometimes those doors won't open until you take that step yeah like people will say like, oh but I'm just keeping this job until this other thing blows up mm -hmm. but it's like that other thing may never blow up if you stay at that job or it's like people that are in miserable relationships and they're like oh I'll leave them like if I found somebody that's better but that person will present itself until yeah. you close that door. Like I'm, I believe in a lot of energies yeah. and like, and I really believe that like God is not going to present a new blessing until you've like closed the last one. Um, or even just like make space yeah. like um, in your life. And it feels really scary to yeah. like let go of, of old things. But 
the new things will present itself once you do. But um, a lot of people has a hard time doing that. And it is really hard. And that's why I commend or can never talk bad about anybody that does any type of thing that's yeah. unstable or out the box or uncomfortable or because I'm just like, but they took the step. They yeah. did it. Like no matter if I like what they do or it's my cup of tea, I'm like, I just respect that you like chose yourself and mm -hmm. believed in yourself and was like, this is what my heart calls me to do. Yeah. Um, no matter if it's successful or not. Yeah. No, that's real. And yeah. even like you have to have to think like what's the worst that can happen and also what's the best that can happen like mm -hmm. in these situations. And I always thought like, I'm not going to die. Like right. me quitting a job, I'm not going to die. Like I have people that support me that are not going to let me like go down to, you know, to yeah. that. Like I have a good <laughs> network of people, but even before then I was just like, I'm not going to die from me deciding to change a career. There's always other opportunities out there and it might not be as financially abundant compared to your previous job or something like that. But like it might fulfill you in a area where you're just like, Oh, I can, I can do this for a, a while, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I did. Actually, when I quit Zara, I started uh, working at a running specialty store, not, mm -hmm. not immediately after, but I love that I felt like I was more at ease. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, eventually I had to quit there because I was <laughs> I, I was I was moving back to New York, and then like the person who ran the store, he was a little bit too overbearing with like certain things. Okay. like he was just like a micromanager. Yeah, like, for for okay. sure. And I didn't <laughs> like that. I don't like when people tell me what to do in general. So it's just like <laughs> I gotta get out of here. So eventually yeah. I, I dip, but like I don't. I feel like people should also think like it's not a failure if you have to go back to a job and yes. you try something. And like it took me a few times. Like I quit jobs like the say Zara a few times before yeah. I was just like, all right, I'm like in a good space. And when I moved back to New York, I worked at a, a vegan restaurant and I, I did that for a while too. And it was. It did what it needed to do at the right. time. Right. Sometimes I you gotta it. do what you gotta do. Seriously. Like my mm -hmm. mom has a hairdresser back mm -hmm. home, so I, like I grew up in the shop, mm -hmm. and like that was always like my fallback mm -hmm. when I had like when I wasn't making money off dancing or like I would be sweeping hair in my mm -hmm. mom's shop, and kind of the older I get, the the older I got, and the more I used to do that, it would feel like a failure being back there every time because like these customers know me my whole life and they would be like oh how's the dancing going and how's da -da -da? and I'd be like well you know right now it's yeah. not really yeah, or yeah. like um when I was even when I was pregnant like this is only like three years ago but I was back in Denmark it was like pandemic times it was nothing going on and so I was working in the shop and it's like and it felt like like a slap in the face every time that I was there mm -hmm. sweeping hair and like they know that I'm a performer and that I li like yeah. that's not really what I want to do and I was constantly faced with that mm -hmm. until I had to be like but this is for a time this yeah, is yeah. right now this is like okay you're pregnant it's a pandemic it's a lot going on like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves too when we want to like do what we love full time yeah. it's like it it just it feels like a failure when you're not doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. When you have that calling that's like, I know, just like you had Azara, yeah. I know I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. Like I know. Then it feels like you're so uncomfortable staying there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It and takes, that's it what, takes a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I always tell people, like, or when I have friends that are tired of their nine to five, and I'm like, but I'm sorry, but you're not in, uncomfortable enough. Because otherwise you would have been left. Yeah. You would have, if you every single day was like, I don't belong here. Every day. All day. Like, it was not just a thought you have every two months when you're a little bit annoyed at your boss. Like, no, if you went to work every day with that feeling of, mm -hmm. I don't belong here, then you would leave. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And I believe in all types of situations. Like, God makes you so uncomfortable <laughs> to push you out. And like... That might be uncomfortable too, but you will be so uncomfortable in your situation and that's going to like pressure you to do something else. Yeah, I find that when I 
worked my best too, I'm uncomfortable. Like it, same. Like it's like there'll be same. some days where I'm just like laying in bed and I'm feeling like oh I can't I, can't, I don't have the energy to do something. But then it's like. Oh, but if you don't do this, yeah, this is yeah. not getting paid. That's not getting paid. Yep. Whatever, and yes. it's fulfilling to be like just creative in general for me. So yes. the more I do that, and and just being active in general too, like it just it helps me like so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really cool having you here. Thank you. I, I really, I really that. like the talk. Um, I think it's really cool and inspiring what you're doing. Thank you. And um, I wish you all the best Thank in you. the marathon. Yes. I'll come cheer for you. Um, and maybe one day I'll run one yes. with you. Yes. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. No, of course. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, today's episode was sponsored by Swig. Please go check them out. You can find you on TikTok, Instagram. And YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. And what's your name on there? What's good, Birdo? <laughs> Thank you for coming. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>